Hi there. Welcome to My Week. I'm Christy McDonald. Thanks so much for joining us on this snowy week. Coming up, we'll take a look at the pressure on Michigan State University and calls for transparency surrounding the sexual assault case of Larry Nasser. Also coming up, a one Detroit in-depth look at a new ordinance aiming to protect the health of people living in southwest Detroit. All that plus headlines are coming up for you. But we are going to start tonight with the Senate race in Alabama that is reverberating around the country. Let's bring in our My Week contributors, Nolan Finley of the Detroit News, Stephen Henderson of the Detroit Free Press. If you're a Republican leadership in Michigan, what does the defeat of Roy Moore tell you and I want to start with that question but first I want to actually acknowledge Nolan's tie which is yeah, a, a I'd say different. holiday and is that the skyline of Detroit yeah, right there? That's, right? that's the Renaissance uh, Center in Santa Claus and it's from the old Hudson's uh, department store. This tie's older than you. <laughs> It probably is. I mean, I mean, older than 25, Nolan. I mean, come no, on, it's not, it's not easier it's than that. It's got the Wren scent on it. That wasn't bad. Well, it's old mold. No, it was started in 77. Yeah. I like it. I like the early holiday warning. All right, let's get started in talking a little bit about the Senate race. Everyone was watching this week. And you know what? I'm going to start with you, actually, um, Stephen, on this one. What does the defeat of Roy Moore, um, what message does that send to Republicans across the country, and specifically here in Michigan? What do you need to watch out for now? I mean, there are a couple of things. And, and you always got to be careful about taking one election and one set of circumstances and applying it to everything else. I think people get ahead of themselves with that. But there are a couple of things that are that are clear from this. One is that the president's coattails are not nearly as long as, as he would think that they are or would like them to be at this point, that, that he remains uh, someone who, who was able to convince voters to vote for him. He has not really been able to convince voters to vote for somebody else. Uh, and, and I think that's important. Uh, the, the other thing that I think Roy Moore teaches is that there is a limit to people's tolerance for mis misbehavior, right? Um, Republicans have been courting more and more people who have serious problems in their backgrounds. You think of the president, uh, the racist things that he said, uh, the anti-religious things that he said. Yeah, but you still had 48 percent of the people voting for him, too. I mean, this wasn't like this was a blowout did, race by blowout. any stretch of the imagination. But there is a limit that people, I think, are, are reaching and saying, this is not okay. And bad uh, behavior uh, in politics, not yeah, in but, but any it's way different. limited. But, but Nolan, why can't, why can't you take this race and, and apply it kind of well, globally I, here? I think, one, because the, Roy Moore was a uniquely flawed candidate. I don't think uh, you're going to have many other child molesters on the ballot. Any other Republican would have run won that race in Alabama and won it handily. I think this speaks in terms of a lesson to Republicans. It says you're going to have to you're going to have to push uh, Steve Bannon out of the Republican Party because he's the one that orchestrated the Roy Moore campaign, the defeat of Luther Strange, who would have won re-election in Alabama handily. So you can't really look at this and say, oh gosh, this was a rejection of Republicans. You had an extraordinarily, you had a child molester on the ballot. You had an extraordinarily flawed candidate. And as you said, he's still almost But won. the other thing you had here, and, and this is the other lesson for Republicans, is you had this incredible grassroots turn out the vote effort particularly in the black community. And there are a lot of states, Alabama is, is the hardest state to make that matter, given how red it is, given mm -hmm. how gerrymandered it is, given how, uh, how many disincentives exist for black people to vote uh, in a state like Alabama. Getting that percentage up to 28 or 29 or wherever it was sure. above, above their presence in the population mm -hmm. is a lesson for Republicans and Democrats about the strength of that vote and how it can change again, the outcome. But again, this was a unique race. Uh, Roy, Roy Moore had very little money. He was outspent $11 million to 800000 on TV. You, I don't know if those conditions are going to be dip, duplicated. I it think the question here is if that voter enthusiasm uh, will be duplicated. Did that turn out, was that turn out all about rejecting Roy Moore or was something bigger going on? I think that's what we'll have to see in 2008. Can you make the argument that something bigger is going on? And if you are in Michigan right now and taking a look at how you're going to set things up for the next year and, and yeah. races, what do you consider? Well, I mean, let's start with the African-American vote and the Democratic relationship with African-American voters. Uh, they have not been able to close the deal with black voters in this state for the last two gubernatorial cycles. Uh, the, the numbers were depressed uh, off, of, off of the presidential years and historically gubernatorial years. Uh, you've got to connect with, with black voters to get them to believe that there's a reason uh, they should vote. 
Republicans also have to, to, to figure out how to avoid uh, the kind of negative stigma that that drives black voters to the well, polls. You can't have an extreme candidate. Well, so black voters weren't voting against Roy Moore because of the sexual harassment thing. They were voting against Roy Moore because he's a racist. They were voting against Roy Moore because he's anti-Muslim. Because he's they had were, a history in that state. Right. State-like. And mm-hmm. and so take the take the sexual uh, abuse but, things out of the out of the equation. He, you he still, still could still get those black candidate. voters. He was still an extreme candidate. But an extreme Even candidate before, that the party had welcomed for a long time before all of this. A lot of people in the party rejected Roy Moore, even in Alabama. 23,000 write-in votes. you got to believe most of those were from Republicans. Republican. Right. And Republican turnout was extraordinary. Well, there was no embracing, broad embracing. You of, had the RNC giving I money. I think you've got, you had, and, and, uh, and they ought to be ashamed of yeah, themselves. Yeah, I mean, you had the president endorsing him, tweeting, robocalling. If you look at the uh, Republican establishment, and the big money Republicans, none wrote a check to Roy Moore. In, in terms of uh, Michigan, I mean, you're going to have to give black voters a candidate they can they warm to, and it's been a long time. They certainly didn't. Hillary Clinton, uh, it's been a long time since Democrats have done Shower, that. Shower, yep. uh, uh, the Keep mayor in down. Lansing. Verge Bernero. Verge Bernero. Keep going down the You've list. had yeah. the candidates who have not been able to excite that, that voter base, and that's a critical element of the Democratic Party in this state. You cannot win without Well, that's something that they're going to have to work on come January yeah. and beyond.